You're watching WHTF ABC 27. Now, live from the station working for you, this is ABC 27 News Daybreak. It is 5.30 on, a, uh, on February 20th, 2009, and we have a weather guy somewhere. <laughs> yeah, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Think. Mm. Uh, oh, he appears. <laughs> Anthony's asleep at the switch. Anthony, you're out. Let's get somebody else in here. Probably because I don't jump in the set until about five seconds before actually. <laughs> Probably there. true. Anthony was rearranging the furniture. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. He's like, you know, beating out the curtains. Anthony's a good boy. We're just spring cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> Must be working on it at home. Let's bring it here. <laughs> Do the weather. All right. Anthony wants you to do the weather, please. Okay. Hey, whatever Anthony says. We've got lower 20s air temperatures. We go to the next column winds. We've got anywhere from right now 13 in Carlisle to 12 in Lebanon, and the wind chill single digits. So we've got five, but it feels like five to three degrees this morning. So fairly chilly outside. Bundle up. We've got lower 20s to about 32 this afternoon. The wind stays with us for today. All right, thanks, Fank. We begin with the economy. New jobless claims are as high as they've been since the 1980s. And the brutality continues on Wall Street, where the Dow fell yesterday to its lowest level in more than six years. Viviana Hurtado has the latest from Washington. All eyes are sure to be on Wall Street this morning to see how much the markets recover after dropping to the lowest point since the economic crisis began. It appears that Wall Street doesn't like the Obama administration's plans to fix the economy. Investors are not convinced that these programs are going to work, that they're going to be enough. Uh, in the meantime, the news of the economy has been very bad and they just don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Last week, the bank rescue plan, up to $1 trillion for the nation's banks. This Tuesday, President Obama signed his $787 billion stimulus, and Wednesday he unveiled a $75 billion mortgage rescue plan. And it's what the future holds that has investors extra jittery, particularly the coming government audit of banks' balance sheets. They're going to go in there and do a kind of uh, Claude Rains in Casablanca. I'm shocked, shocked to discover that these banks are in so much trouble financially. But the markets also anticipate better times. Stock prices tend to bottom out about five months ahead of the end of the recession. Uh, they also tend to bottom out around eight months ahead of the peak in unemployment. Exactly when this recession ends is still anyone's guess. President Obama focuses on Main Street today, meeting with at least 85 mayors to discuss putting the stimulus to work. Viviana Hurtado, ABC News, Washington. It's 533. President Obama will meet with dozens of mayors from across the country this morning, including one from the mid-state. New York Mayor John Brenner is one of 85 mayors who will be in Washington. The president will talk with them about the stimulus bill and what it means for their cities. Well, police have two suspects in custody this morning in connection with the Coatesville arsons. Last night, police arrested 20-year-old Mark Gilliam of Westchester. He's facing a federal charge for the attempted arson of a restaurant in nearby Thorndale. Police also arrested 19-year-old Roger Barlow of Downington. He's accused of setting nine fires in Coatesville. Since the beginning of the year, there have been 23 arsons there. Investigators say the case is not closed, but people in the community should feel safer. This is a blessing. This is an awesome blessing. The city, I mean, the praise is all I can say. It's like I'm overwhelmed. And I believe if you turn him loose in Coachville, there wouldn't be a trial. There would not be a trial if you turn him loose in Coachville. Barlow is being held on $9 million bail. Investigators aren't saying if he and Gilliam worked together or even knew each other. A prayer vigil will be held today outside the Lancaster home where a toddler died in a fire this week. Three-year-old Victor Weiss was killed when a row home on Christian Street went up in flames Wednesday afternoon. Investigators say fumes from a gas tank ignited a pilot light in the water heater in the basement. A memorial fund is being set up at Belco Credit Union. A former Susquehanna Township police officer is accused of exposing himself in public. Corporal Fred Schweitzer was charged with indecent exposure and open lewdness. A mother and her 15-year-old daughter told investigators they saw Schweitzer in the common area of an apartment complex on Wakefield Road. He has reportedly resigned from the force. Cumberland County Jewelry Store is closed and the owner is under investigation. Police say a woman complained the owner of Magnolia Jewelers in North Middleton Township cheated her. The woman says she sold the store gold jewelry with the promise that gemstones in the pieces would be returned later. Instead, the woman says she was given replacement stones worth $7,000 less. In court documents, police say Magnolia Jewelers was not licensed to buy gold in Cumberland County.
Well, it looks like taxpayers are really the ones paying the price for the bonus gate investigation. So far, taxpayers have shelled out nearly $6 million. The money has gone to attorneys defending Democrats and Republicans in both the House and Senate. So far, 12 people have been charged. Many are wondering when more will be announced. When we are prepared, just as we, I think, when we showed you what we had for the first round and you were stunned, you'll probably be stunned again. Meanwhile, some attorneys working for the four caucuses are charging taxpayers $300 an hour. Bonusgate is the investigation into whether bonuses were illegally provided to state employees for campaign work. Well, this morning, California's lengthy budget battle is finally over. That begins our look at stories making national headlines. After 106 days of partisan bickering, lawmakers finally ironed out a deal last night. The plan includes a combination of tax hikes and spending cuts aimed at closing the state's $42 billion deficit. The FBI has located another American billionaire banker who may have swindled people out of their life savings. Our Alan Stanford turned himself in and has surrendered his passport. He's accused of committing an $8 billion fraud. He's also under investigation by the FBI for possibly laundering money for one of Mexico's most notorious drug cartels. Stanford has contributed millions of dollars to Republicans and Democrats alike and got access to high levels of power in Washington in return. Well, a Missouri woman is alive and well this morning. She missed being shot thanks to her hair weave. The woman was sitting in a parking lot when her ex-boyfriend approached. He said he still loved her and wanted her back. When she said she wasn't interested, he pulled a gun and started shooting. But she was saved. And one of them hit the back of my head. And I luckily didn't go through because my back of my weave, my wig cap stopped it. And it was hanging in my hair. And See, it was about this small scrunched up. Police say if it wasn't for the weave, the bullet would have entered her skull. She probably would be dead. Goodness gracious. Unbelievable. She said she spent hundreds of dollars over the years on her hair weave, and she said that it's actually worth it now. It all paid off in the end. Money well spent, I Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Wow. 538. Coming up next on Daybreak, lots of people having money problems, especially college students. But one mid-state community is easing the burden. We'll tell you how.